Yeah, good afternoon all. Welcome to this today's session of International Adolescent Health Week, which is being celebrated from March 20 to 26, uh, 2022. Uh, today's program, uh, we are going to have in a type of webinar where there will be two lectures by our eminent experts of adolescent field. And it will be on adolescent issues in OPD practice, a case-based approach. Uh, life is marked by transitions and adolescents are our future. We should help them tackle this transition phase. Hence, the theme this year of the Adolescent Week is transition from childhood to adulthood, physically and mentally, from a pre-pandemic life into a life shaped by a pandemic from dependence to independence. There were many activities planned by Maharashtra Association, IAP, along with the uh, Maharashtra Women's Committee this week. And this were followed on Teenage Day. There were on Doctor's Day, the various videos were released of the uh, parents with their daughters. And also the Lifestyle Day, today we are having it as a part of this week. And also several videos, approximately 8 to 12 videos are being released this week. Already 7 to 8 are released by the eminent expert pediatricians of Maharashtra on various uh, topics of adolescence uh, for uh, the common people, that is for the parents and in local language on our YouTube Maha AP channel. So I request all of you to please subscribe the Maha AP channel and also see all the activity videos, which are very, very beautiful that you can share with your parents group also. And uh, webinars were taken for parents on 23rd March, for teachers on 25th March by this organization. And today it is for our own collective pediatricians for this 26th March. What for Swami Vivekananda says about youth? He stressed the youth need for the youth to lead a responsible and dutiful life. He believed that youth is the foundation of the country and they are a great asset to any nation as they are full of energy, enthusiasm and innovative ideas. So we have to give their transitions a smooth way. So that's why the transition theme was being taken internationally. Now I welcome our president, Dr. Gangolia of Maharashtra IAP 2022. And sir, we I request you to please guide our audience with your views. Thank you, madam. Good afternoon. Uh, today's chief guest, Dr. Suchit Tamboli, sir, as well as the esteemed faculty, Dr. Jayashri, Jaya madam, Dr. Manjusha, madam, as well as moderator, Dr. Renu, chairperson of the Women's Committee, as well as I see co-chairperson, Dr. Sonali, Dr. Neha, and uh, others who are there, as well as Dr. Amol Pawar, our general secretary is also joining. And uh, let me first appreciate and really I congratulate the Maha IP Women Committee to celebrate this International Adolescent Week. And this week uh, started since 21st and tomorrow it will be the last day of this week and almost we have um, 12 videos will be released by the end of this week. Already nine are released on three and four are waiting. So that will be released to tomorrow. And uh, we had three good programs for parents, for teachers, and this is for us, for the us pediatricians. And we face so many adolescent issues in our office practice as well as OPD practice. And I, I am very much sure that this uh, today's session will just enrich our knowledge to deal with the adolescent issues, what we face in our OPD. So once again, hearty congratulation to Mahai P1 committee, chairperson, co-chairperson, all their zonal members, 10 zonal members, and they have done excellent, wonderful work. And I do expect same work on the uh, others week celebration, which are going to come in our the, this year. And uh, with this, all my best wishes and to uh, this session. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir, for your kind words of appreciation. And we know that it is with your guidance and Dr. Amul's guidance that we all the women's committee members could do this program, sir. So it is your uh, motivation that is very much important. So and Dr. I, Renu, I, Dr. Renu, madam, and I, at this time, at this point of time, let me appreciate because the two, two, two more important persons who are always behind the screen, 
One yeah, is Dr. Yeah. Neha Singh and yeah. another is the Dr. Vishal Rao. They are always behind the screen working on the flyers and on the uh, messages. Thank you very much, Dr. Neha. As well, in absence, I acknowledge the um, thanks to Dr. Vishal Rao also. Yes, 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 sir. Madam, yes madam. they are very important part of our uh, this uh, digital team and also editing team. And uh, I thank them from the bottom of my heart and also welcome to this session, Neha ma'am. Uh, now I ask our Secretary General, Dr. Amol Pawar, who is being seen joining. Uh, sir, are you there? Please guide our uh, August audience with your good words. Uh, I think so. Is audio issue? Yeah, audio issue. I think he will be joining in a few minutes. Uh, we can take it later. Uh, uh, Alleka, sir. Hota hai, hota hai. We'll, sir, we'll wait to for it. We acknowledge the presence of Dr. Sampas Sasane also. He is um, from the Terna Medical College also. And he... welcome, Dr. Sampas Sasane, sir. Yeah, there is yes, Dr. Amul, Minakai. Am Amul, are you there? Really, madam, you can ask him. Uh, Amol, huh, unmute yourself and please start the video. Or uh, only you can unmute if the video. Ah, uh, ala ala. He's joining from two sides. <laughs> oh, Amol, sir, please guide our August uh, gathering with your expert opinion for this program. Yes. <laughs> there is some problem with the uh, laptop connection. Uh, so I joined with mobile also. Okay. This is very nice initiative uh, taken by Dr. Renu Boralkar, ma'am, and uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Sonali Shirbati, madam. And uh, today we have esteemed guests, uh, esteemed speakers from Nagpur, Dr. Manjusha Giri, ma'am, and uh, Dr. Jayasri Shivalkar, ma'am. And uh, I thank Dr. Suchi Tamuli, sir, to be chief guest for today's session. And uh, we'll be getting lots of inputs about uh, adolescent healthcare. Uh, problems from the, both the speakers. So, uh, thank you. Thank you, Jai Sri Shivalkar, ma'am, and Manju Shakri, ma'am, for being expert. And I uh, hand over to Renu Barbukar, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, sir, Amul, sir. Uh, now, this I take the opportunity on behalf of Women's Committee Maharashtra IP to welcome all our respected pediatricians, senior teachers who have joined for this today's session and also uh, other uh, uh, who are there on the dais. Uh, now, today's uh, guest of honor that we have is Dr. Suchi Tamboli, sir. Tamboli, sir, I would like to introduce you. He has a very, very uh, large CV, but from that, I will short, uh, shorten it out and uh, salient features, I will tell, though all are salient and important features that I see in his CV. He is a PhD pediatrics and also in the developmental pediatrics and uh, fellowship of Indian Academy of Pediatrics. He is the first practicing pediatrician in Maharashtra to be honored the PhD from MUHS, awarded at India's top most 25 pediatricians and most promising doctor in developmental and adolescent pediatrics in India. He was National Executive Board Member of Central IAP 2017 and 19. He is faculty in international, national and state conferences 1999. More than 350 lectures he has given in various conferences. He is the National Coordinator of IAP Action Plan Basics of Behavior Module 1920. National Convener and Coordinator Development for All Cradle to Crayons early intervention 2016-19, to 19. chairperson government of Maharashtra Disability Certification Committee and has many publications, more than 15 papers in index journals, editors of three books and also has his own YouTube channels with many videos guiding our uh, general population of uh, parents and hobbies of reading, singing, oh God, singing and drama. Sir, you have to be a drama. So, welcome, sir. Welcome to this. Our uh, one uh, line, you can say, I can again will call you in the next, uh, after the day. So, please uh, have a few words. Uh, thank you, madam. Uh, Renu, madam, for uh, introduction and uh, I think uh, uh, without wasting much time, uh, I uh, must congratulate uh, Dr. Raymond Gangulia sir and uh, Dr. Jayashree and Dr. Manjusha and uh, Dr. Renu that you are conducting a very good program and uh, 
I think uh, this week was full of uh, quality programs, which uh, we really enjoyed. Every pediatrician must have enjoyed from Maharashtra and outside. And uh, I wish uh, all the best for this program also. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Now we will move towards our topic of today, Adolescence Issues in OPD, of which the first uh, session is by Dr. Jaya Shivalkar Man. Her topic is mental health issues that will be taken as a case-based approach. Jaya Shivalkar Madam is known to one and all, but still I would like to introduce her. She is a developmental pediatrician and child and adolescent psychologist from Nagpur, uh, Child Development and Activities Swayam Center. National level life skills trainer. She has written various articles on child development. She is ex member for the State Advisory Board on Disability, Maharashtra State. Ex president AHA Nagpur, uh, joint secretary GDBPIAP, conducted more than 100 workshops for parents, teachers, students, and rehabilitation professionals, and presently member of State Committee Mental Health Board. Ma'am, please over to you for your uh, lecture. Thank you so much. And uh, first of all, thank you, Dr. Gangolia, sir, and uh, Dr. Renu, madam, uh, Dr. Amol Pawar, for giving me this opportunity to be part of this week and as well as for today's session. Paloi, madam, yes. So the topic uh, which I have been given is uh, mental health issues in OPD practice. Uh, nowadays, we are quite aware, especially after the pandemic, that uh, everybody is aware of mental health issues, whether it is of children or uh, adolescent or even adults or even senior citizens. But somehow it has been not much in picture as far as our general OPD practice is concerned. So that is why this topic was taken to create awareness about these issues and how a general pediatrician can handle, identify these issues and what sort of things he would need in order to give some uh, take home uh, messages to the patients or where to refer basic guidelines regarding dealing with mental health issues regarding the adolescence. So that is what we are going to see today. And as the picture shows, you can see that it is the burden which a child is carrying, which is very heavy. And uh, definitely the parents, the teachers and the pediatricians need to help the child in dealing with this heavy weight of mental health problems. So, what are the key issues in today's topic? Why it is important? Or is it important? Do mental health disorder present in childhood? That is the first question. Then do they have any uh, uh, problems in general opinion? Is it presented in a full-fledged form as a mental health disorder or is it seen only as a tendency that maybe this child as he grows into adolescence and uh, adult he will have some problems. So these are the issues which we already have in our mind and how the child will present. What is the nature of the presentation when we can call it as a mental health issue. Next. And what are the uh, role of pediatrician. Can we actually help the child? Do I have a role in dealing with these issues? Every pediatrician should ask this. And as we are talking about comprehensive child care, definitely, yes, we do have a role uh, as a pediatrician. And uh, whenever we see adolescent having some of the other issues, the main question they have in their mind is where to go. Isko dikhana hai ye issue. If I'm not feeling well, I'm feeling depressed, I'm feeling nervous, previously. Then to whom do I go to psychiatrist? Previous slide, please. Yeah. Do I go to psychiatrist? And as we all know, there are so many uh, stigma and barriers related to the uh, going to the psychiatrist visit. And are the psychiatrists also equipped to handle these children and adults? And that also is a question. So. Uh, who are the persons who are going to help the child? So definitely we as a pediatrician who are handling the child since birth uh, are the correct person to guide the parent as well as the teenager. 
is there any role of drugs yes there is a definite role of drugs we will see that and as we have seen in the last uh, adolescent week lot of things have been said about the issue. even our maha iit uh, sunday program was on emotional quotient we are talking about life skills as a preventive measure uh, we are talking of uh, uh, cbt that is a cognitive behavior therapy as a uh, treatment approach so these are the terms and these are the things we should be aware of in today's times next so uh, practically speaking this uh, classification which i have given is uh, practically but definitely the presentation may overlap but to understand how the children present this is very important so uh, first uh, disorder of psychological development we have a whole chapter of growth chap uh, development behavior pediatrics so there are many children we know who are uh, having uh, intellectual disability autism md language disorders and so many things what happens to these children when they grow many of us would lose the contact with these patients but do they have any problems as they grow up definitely i would say most of these uh, children as they grow will have lot of mental health issues but unfortunately we lose the track and we miss the uh, uh, opportunity to help or guide these patients so we have to remember if we have these children we need to keep a follow up uh, in their adolescence as well as in young adulthood so this is the first uh, group of patients uh the disorders of psychological development that is developmental disorders as they grow will land up into some of the other mental problems next the second category which we we'll encounter is the emotional and behavior disorder and the onset would be in the childhood or in early adulthood so what we see as hyperactivity oppositional defiant disorder conduct disorder anxiety disorder aneurysis encopresis so these are some of the uh, common behavioral issues which we are encountering in our opd practice many times parent come for vaccination or for illness they will say ye to bilkul sunta nahi hai this child doesn't listen he is creating a havoc uh, he is not eating well he is not sleeping well and so many other complaints so we have to probe this complaint and maybe we find out that some of them are adhd some of them will have tendency of uh, oppositional defiant disorder some would be actually conduct disorder and so many others so this is the second group of uh, uh, children who will present at some or the other mental health problems and next class is the adult psychiatric disorder which we unfortunately miss because it is said that 50% of adult psychiatric disorder will present in adolescents or young adults so as we can see the psychiatrist has so busy opd but 50% of them would be presenting in front of us and unfortunately we are missing them so many personality disorder psychosis anxieties depression nervousness all these things are seen in adolescence and in young adulthood and we need to have an open eye to identify them because many of them can be helped at the correct time because if help is offered during this time this adolescent time is very important from their education career vocation so if they have any problems uh, in their mental health their education is affected their career is affected their marriage is affected so we have to catch them young and treat them as early as possible so these are three types of uh, children and adolescent who will be presenting with some or the other mental health problem next so what we are going to see here is three uh, conditions which are very commonly seen and then we will keep up uh, we will take up with the discussion so the common presentation is 18 years old girl who is giving you history of persistent sadness her eating is affected sleep is affected many times eating and sleep are affected either they are eating less or more or similarly they are sleeping less or sleeping more so either way it is affected the child has feeling of worthlessness her studies are affected her day to day functioning is affected and she is having recurrent self harm thought cutting the wrist is nowadays very common self harm activity done by teenagers 
many schools will say many teachers will say and even many parents will agree to that some or the other time their children adolescent have tried this next case number 2 is uh, anxiety 20 years young girl who is continuously feeling nervous and importantly she is having excessive and racing thoughts which are making her irritable there is a feeling of guilt there is feeling of fear there is sleeplessness and social withdrawal these are the general presentation signs of anxiety in addition to this there can be types of anxiety like if the child if the person has ocd then she will give the complaint of obsessional or compulsive thoughts if there is social anxiety the parents will say that the child is refusing to go to uh, meet the friends or relatives if there is post traumatic stress disorder like we are seeing which is very common in this uh, pandemic uh, times then we can have a history of severe trauma in the family and following that the person is having anxiety or if there is phobia then of course there will be history of certain uh, issue related with the fear related or phobia so these are general signs of anxiety third third is internet addiction disorder again nowadays we are facing this uh, very commonly 18 year boy who has extreme preoccupation with screen who is lying for that he is showing disobedience he is socially withdrawn again sleep and eating is affected studies is affected and there are many illegal cyber activities including uh, some monetary activities also we can see that so you can see that depression anxiety and now internet addiction disorder next so in all these things what we can see that there are some symptoms who are common to all and the presentation may be uh, confusing for a general pediatrician so what is important is how we approach these images and for that we have a what we call it as a gather approach what we are used to it in our general opd is that parents are coming to us and they are making the complaint he has fever he has cough or he has pain in abdomen so basically we are interacting with the parents and we are examining the child but in case of adolescent or in case of a teenager many times we have to directly interact with the teenager and we are not used to it number one and secondly we are not you know uh, used to giving some more time 5 minutes 10 minutes for this uh, adolescent but then a pediatrician should a lot a separate time for this is to taking and this is the gather approach where you can imagine a standard 12 uh, boy or a girl coming to you definitely you have to say hello with the uh, their name maybe you can enter hello madhuri how are you you know so and you have to introduce yourself this is also very important because most of the time uh, a teenager is brought forcefully by the parent chalo tumko dikhana hai and the child is not willing so you have to introduce and create a rapport that you know i am so and so and in this way we are going to talk and uh, maybe today we can have a general session and if you wish you can have a so something like that so we have to introduce ourselves and then of course you can ask uh, the general uh, heades question which will be dealing in the next slide and at the same time you have to have a active listening ability so uh, not showing lot of hurry not uh, into mobile and uh, just to show that you know you are busy and the child your activator is talking it should not be like that so you have to listen and whenever you are listening to them and whenever you are planning to give some uh, information we have to take him into confidence we have to build the uh, rapport give him the confidence that this uh, information is going to be confidential between the uh, pediatrician and the adolescent and then what you are finding problem and what you plan to do you have to convey that relevant information to that teenager because nowadays they want everything uh, clearly to be stated and then you can ask them that this is the way these are our options this is the way i can help this is the way you can ask help for somebody so what is your plan of action we have to discuss we have to explain and give you key points from your history and whatever 
uh, judgment pediatrician has spoken and the last either we have to refer him or we have to call for follow up so this is the gather approach where we are talking to adolescent in a very confident and confidential manner without getting non judgmental and asking relevant information and giving also in the uh, proper way what we plan to do with him because that is what they expect us to do next so this is uh, everybody is aware of this uh, headache approach but i just narrate this that when you are talking to him uh, or her uh, the teenager we have to have information about general information about uh, home family setup uh any his eating pattern uh eating also there are many problems that they are not eating properly they are into dieting or some forceful dieting or binge eating episodes or uh, uh, vomiting episodes so there are many things related with the eating which can be very informative for the pediatrician and of course regarding the education uh, because that is a very important task of adolescents then general activities uh, we prefer to start with the activity many times because that is what the child is interested in and that is a good way to start the conversation then regarding drugs is taking any drugs uh, drugs means medicine also and the substance also. and uh, feeling of depression then substance use is very important because many times do get adolescents have been trying weed because this weed word i have learned from patients only i was not aware let me tell you few years back uh, uh, adolescent came and he said i am on weed i was not aware what is weed so there are many things in the substance use uh, actually we can have a separate uh, uh, workshop on this sometime and lot of information we will get so this is also we have to ask in sexual activities nowadays there are sexuality issues also gender issues and sleep also and the last is safety so these are the things which we uh, which will be asking in the uh, history in a friendly interactive manner next so what we see uh, the three cases we have seen uh, and uh, overall symptoms were, were like general not feeling well not eating well uh, sometimes feeling sleepy sometimes not feeling sleepy sometimes cooperative sometimes uh, hyperactive so many of us would feel ki teenagers do behave like this so uh, uh, when do we take it seriously so when the symptoms though this can be considered sometimes as a normal developmental pattern of adolescence but when they are severe when they are chronic chronic means more than one and six weeks inconsistent with the development we have to take take them very seriously secondly if it is affecting the daily functioning of the child like the play activities the social activities and the academic activities then uh, we do have to take them seriously and if they are affecting family functioning if you talk to parents many times parents will say that you know our whole family is disturbed because of this child we don't know what to do every day we are fighting his grandmother is fighting uh, father is blaming me and so many other things so when you realize that the family function is affected then definitely you have to take the matter very serious next and in case of children and adolescent we have to remember few things very clearly number one is that child or adolescent is brought by adult so he himself may be ready or not ready to come to us number 1 number 2 he may not be even aware that he has any problems because he is brought by somebody uh, his teachers or parents and the child is absolutely saying ki mai to theek hi hu so he is not having any problem by himself he is brought by the adults at the same time behavioral problems can be due to disturbances in the family member or family setup so again the family history from the teenagers also and from the parents also is very important especially in this post pandemic area uh, period i think this is very important to have a family history and every time stage and assessment of developmental status is very important because we are dealing with the children and it could be a child with ld could be child with autism mild autism so we should know his developmental status and intelligence status. next 
So we can have this general presentation as we have seen the child could be presently with the physical symptoms. Surprisingly, I have had many reference from pediatric gastroenterologists because pain in abdomen is very common symptom and the uh, reason could be psychological. So physical symptoms, headache, general body ache, uh, and uh, uh, stomach ache are very common. Then sleep disturbances, uh, not only it is less sleep or more sleep, but it is the altered sleep schedule also is very important. So many times parents will say that it is a day or a night. So child is, he is getting adequate sleep, but you can see that he is not interacting with any of the family members. He is avoiding family members. The whole night if the person is awake and in the morning he is sleeping. Then eating disturbances. Less eating, more eating, junk food eating, binge eating, uh, uh, food fads, they are very common or even extreme dieting is also very commonly seen which can be very dangerous especially in girls. Then social uh, behavior is also very important the parents will tell that the child is socially withdrawn. Poor school performance is the most important point for which probably the parents will bring the child. Because for them in this age, school performance is very important. And then inattention, lack of concentration, excessive need of reassurance, inability to handle stress could be some other presentation. Next. So what do we do? So we have to remember that therapy is multimodal. It's a teamwork. And maybe sometimes we have to do liaison with mental health professionals. And sometimes we have to prescribe some drugs also. Okay. Next. So the team has pediatrician, psychologist, psychiatrist, parent, teacher, social worker, and counselor. But remember, these all these may not be available at every setup. So maybe uh, in the urban or uh, ultra urban area, maybe this team is available, but it may not be available. So many times pediatrician has to take role of everybody. And as our uh, uh, adolescent health academy and other uh, uh, programs are going on, they are really training us to be a uh, to take this lead of uh, uh, teamwork. And here we can work as each member of the team. So we are pediatrician, we can be counselor, we can have a bit of psychological training also. And uh, as a parent uh, teachers also, we can guide the parent, we can guide the teacher and definitely counseling is also can be done by us. And pediatricians, if they take up this role and if they take up this uh, practice as a Saturday afternoon practice, you know, it is really fun. It is very satisfying. And uh, as we are, you know, growing old and maybe not into active uh, uh, intensive or other practice, then also you can shift your practice from uh, those issues to this practice where you can, you know, relax, enjoy your talking with the teenagers and uh, enjoy your Saturday afternoon with this, which will be very much beneficial to your patients. So you can take up the role of pediatrician as well as a uh, counseling. And maybe sometime we will have a workshop on CBT, uh, cognitive behavior therapy, which will empower our pediatricians to uh, give this therapy in their opinion. So treatment approaches are behavioral play therapy. And in our center, we are giving this behavior play therapy right from five years of age. So it is that effective. And uh, cognitive behavior therapy and REBT is rational emotive behavior therapy. These are the tools basically, which are used for proper counseling. Someday we'll work on it. Family therapy, definitely very important. And as we are all aware, this is the age of education vocation. So we have to guide them as per their education and vocational needs. And last, EQ skill, life skills, and social skills and rehabilitation. We have been talking on these for last uh, one week, so I will not go in details. But these are very basic things for positive mental health. So as we uh, promote this positive mental health or prevention of mental health issues, these things become very important. Next. Medicines, yes, uh, three types of medicines are uh, mostly used. Antipsychotics, if there are uh, uh, signs and uh, symptoms of psychosis or uh, mood disorders. Antidepressants, very commonly used by the pediatrician. 
एंटी एंजाइटी फॉर जनरलाइज एंजाइटी ओसीडी और डिप्रेशन एंड मूड स्टेबिलाईजर इट्स बाइपोलर डिसऑर्डर और सीवियर अपोजिशनल डिफाइन डिसऑर्डर ODD is fairly common and frequently they need medication. Next. Next. So important things to remember is that 50% of adult mental health disorder present in childhood and adolescence. And we have to empower ourselves to identify them as early as possible so that we can work on them. Environmental factors are important. So we have to deal with the parents and teachers also. Definite increase is seen in the childhood mental health disorder, maybe because of the environmental challenges, or maybe the children are not so resilient as we are. I think every parent or a doctor nowadays are saying the same thing that we were more resilient during our childhood, but these children are not. So probably we need to work on their building resilience also. Or maybe now we are more aware so that we are identifying and uh, uh, treating the mental health issues. And the environmental changes, stressors, and overall awareness. Next. So, I think that is all. Uh, the take home message is definitely we need to upgrade ourselves. We need to give at least one day of our practice or half day of our practice for these teenagers. And gradually, it will uh, not only help them also, but help us also uh, to learn new things and to help these teenagers and the families in a great way. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Jaya, ma'am. You have excellently presented the variety of the mental health disorders that are there in the adolescence and also the head eyes uh, approach and everything for our basic pediatricians. Because as you tell that uh, for a Saturday afternoon, we can have our OPD practice like general pediatricians or those now uh, like me in uh, intensive care. I am now not into that last 20 years we are going in. Now we have to switch over to something else. So it is right thing that you are telling. And it is a uh, very, uh, in, this thing also uh, um, motivating when you're talking with the teenagers also. So that is one of the thing. I would now request Dr. Suchi Tamboli, our guest of honor, to kindly have some expert comments on this talk, sir. Uh, thank you, Renu Madam. And I think uh, Jaya Madam has covered mm -hmm. almost uh, everything uh, which is important. Uh, just a few uh, things to add that uh, what pediatricians need to do is that uh, the OPD uh, should be like uh, adolescence friendly. The posters or the uh, weighing machine or uh, whatever the material you are having in your OPD that should be adolescence friendly. That is very important because uh, whatever uh, means whenever adolescence comes to you, uh, he is uh, initially resistant because uh, he was coming to you as a child also. So he, he is not in, uh, interested in uh, going to the same clinic uh, where uh, he was uh, called as a, a child. So he needs uh, actually his own identity uh, to be identified and then uh, uh, talk to him. So that is very important. And uh, the uh, next thing is that pediatrician should know the simple test like uh, Beck's inventory for depression or uh, scared for anxiety. And these are very simple tests which they can train themselves or even their staff to score and uh, they can uh, screen the children, diagnose them and they should know what are the common medicines which is very important and how that can be given. So, uh, like fluoxetine for the depression, how much dose uh, we should give. So, that, that is very important. I think that if, if that uh, is taken care of, we can manage mental health issues at least uh, not less than 70% to 80%. And then, so I deliberately avoided the name of the test because uh, we didn't have that much of time. And yeah. sometimes, you know, uh, it can, you know, just uh, give that sense of, are you test karna hai kya, to ye on simple symptomatology also pediatrician so that, 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 that is that is definitely good but only simple screening test for yes. the confirmation of diagnosis they can yes. do at, at their own uh, center that is yes. what i want to tell yes. definitely thank definitely you. thank you thank you thank you sir for your uh, inputs and now we'll move on to our next session uh, of this uh, lecture uh, series uh,
that is on lifestyle disorders in adolescence by Dr. Manjusha Giri, madam. Uh, Manjusha Giri, madam, she is presently the chairperson of AH in Nagpur, co-chairperson Save Girl Child IMA headquarters. She is the vice president IMA Nagpur, director uh, of uh, MHJ, Institute of Science and Commerce, Executive Committee Member Nagpur 21-24, uh, 22. Executive Committee Member of AMWN Nagpur. So presently she is working in neuron, she's a director of Neuron Brain Spine and Critical Care Hospital Nagpur, which is she's having a consultant post of neurodevelopmental pediatrician. She has very major achievements and honors, awards and publications of which important she has noted as Vidarbha level Lokmat Sakhi Samman Award for services in medical and social field, best honorary secretary IMA headquarters national award. She has a president appreciation award IMA Maharashtra state COVID Yodha Sanman IMA Nagpur. And she has also trained in rational emotive behavior therapy and cognitive behavior therapy. And uh, also she has many publications to her and have more than 300 awareness programs in field of medicine. Over to you, ma'am, for your topic. Welcome. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for uh, those nice words and in detailed introduction. First, I will share my screen. Am I audible? Yes, yes, yes. And uh, my screen is visible? Yes, it is visible. Is it moving? Yes, yes. yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, respected uh, chief guest, Dr. Suchit Tamboli, sir. Uh, respected Dr. Gangolia, sir, President Maharashtra IAP, uh, Dr. Amul Pawar, sir, Renu, madam, and Jaya, madam, thank you for giving me this opportunity to communicate with you all. And it's my pleasure uh, to share my uh, slides and my uh, few things uh, regarding adolescent issues in OPD practices and uh, mainly lifestyle disorders and uh, uh, and uh, neurometabolic uh, disorders specifically. Uh, so this is Miss XYZ, 16 year old child weighing 91 kg. She was 80 kg a year ago. She tried dieting, going to gym and uh, nothing worked for her except uh, she got pain in uh, limbs uh, and knees. Second case is Ranjan, 12-year-old boy, weighing 77 kg. Weight is increased by 15 kgs during COVID pandemic. And pandemic and black uh, pigmentation on neck is present. Then third case is Vidula, 17-year female child, has weight of 78 kgs. Irregular menstrual cycle started getting excessive hair on face and stria on knee, hip, and abdomen. These are some cases which we, uh, some cases like these we go through during our routine OPD practice. And these cases fall under metabolic syndromes. Metabolic syndrome is a name for group of risk factors that occur together and increase the risk for cardiovascular diseases, stroke, type 2 diabetes, and formally called as insulin resistance syndrome, that is syndrome X. It includes central obesity and insulin resistance and most important underlying factors of the syndrome. Prevalence in the adolescent population is significantly increasing and uh, According to some data, every third adolescent is suffering from some or other problem of metabolic syndrome. So this is very important topic which we are going to discuss in our today's uh, session. So uh, what are the, according to ATP2, metabolic syndrome is present if you have three or more of the following signs. Systolic blood pressure, 
more than or equal to 90th percentile for the gender, age, and height. Fasting blood sugar more than 100 milligram per deciliter. Large waist circumference that is more than 75th percentile for the age and gender. Then low HDL cholesterol and boys 15 to 19 years under 5 milligram per deciliter and others under 50 milligram per deciliter and triglycerides more than or equal to 100 milligram per deciliter. And pediatric definition by ways and all, according to ways and all, metabolic syndrome is present if there are three or more of the following signs, that is high blood pressure, that is more than 95th percentile, fasting blood sugar, more than 100, large waist circumference, more than 75th percentile, fasting triglycerides, more than 5th percentile for age and sex, and HDL, less than 5th percentile for age and sex. So common metabolic issues which come under this category are mainly obesity, then comes dyslipidemia, hypertension, pediatric conditions, then diabetes, PCOS, lean PCOS, in which weight is not, uh, not increased, but a uh, girl is uh, suffering from PCOS, then thyroid dysfunction. Thyroid dysfunction may lead to metabolic dysfunction or obesity may lead to thyroid deficiency because require, uh, as requirement is increased, normal secreting thyroid hormone is not sufficient. So there may be thyroid dysfunction and they have impact on, uh, there is impact of psychology uh, of adolescent on these conditions or these conditions also have impact on psychology of adolescent, that is vice versa. So what are the body image, stressors in adolescent, media has its own effect on metabolic uh, dysfunction, Then there are relationship issues. Madam has already told about these issues that is depression and all then contemplation over experimentation and academic career decisions. These are few stressors, low socioeconomic status. There are family conflicts which may lead to uh, stress on adolescent and there will be some uh, lifestyle modification, lifestyle disorders in these children. Then we will go to childhood obesity. If body mass index in, we, we are, as we are discussing in adolescent age group, body mass index is measured as weight in kgs divided by height in meter square. And if body mass index is uh, up to 23, it is normal. Then 23 to 27, it is overweight. More than 27, it is obesity. Uh, 27 to 25, uh, 35, it is obesity and 35, it is uh, above, it is uh, moderate to severe obesity, extreme obesity. So how often we should calculate BMI? In our office practice, child is uh, coming to us during the first three years, it is recommended to monitor height and weight of every child during vaccination visit so that we can early pick that obesity or metabolic problems in the child. After that, every six months till the age of five years and from five to 18 years, BMI assessment is recommended at least one year. And these are plotted on these graphs given by uh, Dr. Khadilkar. So, there are causes behind obesity and in majority of cases, that is more than 90% of cases, there are no pathological causes. It is physiological, it is exogenous or constitutional obesity. It in exogenous obesity, growth is normal, development is normal and pubertal signs are present. In monogenic obesity, early onset obesity before five years of age, with extreme hyperphagia. The child eats, uh, eat, child eats continuously. 
food seeking behavior stealing food eating food left over food by others and impaired satiety then obesity syndromes are distinct features and abnormal faces then digits then visual uh, disturbances may be there in obesity syndromes then hypothalamic obesity typical neurological signs may be seen that is headache irritability seizures or neurological insult with rapid weight gain and hyperphagia drug induced obesity we have history of uh, receiving glucocorticoids or antipsychotics or antiepileptic medicines and endocrine causes hypothyroidism cushing syndrome pseudo hypothyroidism and associated short stature is the hallmark so obesity causes mild elevation of tsh that is usually its effect and not a cause is it pathological if there is delay in growth delay in puberty and delay in development we can think of pathological conditions if there is dysmorphism facial features or digits or fingers extra or uh, less then we can think of uh, it's a pathological condition if there is hyperphagia loss of satiety early onset visual symptoms are there and neurological features are there then it's a pathological condition and we have to treat it differently what are the causes behind first cause is birth weight if the child was of low birth weight that is barker hypothesis uh, if child was low birth weight iugr a child may uh, get uh, metabolic symptoms in early adolescence or in adulthood then lifestyle excessive junk food outside food and uh, packed food if the child is eating sugary uh, drinks if he is taking uh dietary intake is more screen time is more and less physical activity it can lead to obesity then family history of obesity hypertension and dyslipidemia is one of the genetic cause for obesity onset and progression is important and pubertal staging including measurement of stretch penile length in boys is important because during early puberty we may see a child is uh, look, child look like obese there is excessive weight gain then treatment history for drugs causing obesity it is very important nowadays there are very uh, so many food pads and medicines which are available online and easily available and they are taking by own self prescribed medicines are there uh, they are taking so treatment history of drug causing obesity and treatment history of uh, glucocorticoids and other medicines which have seen uh, antiepileptics it is very important then assessment of pointers and features of syndrome that is cadavilla and uh, we have to see and waist circumference marker for abdominal obesity which is very important so what are the pointers for complication if the child is having headache benign intracranial hypertension or hypertension leg pain due to uh, slipped uh, femoral epiphysis then daytime somnol uh, somnolence child uh, sleep apnea if the child is obese and he he or she is not able to sleep properly then in daytime anywhere child go to uh, sleep in the class they will sleep so uh daytime somnolence then abdominal pain due to gallstone disease then polyuria suggesting of type 2 diabetes cutaneous acanthosis as we have seen in our second case and over diagnosis should be avoided that is small phallic size due to buried penis precocious puberty in girls with lipomastia should be uh, Uh, we should not over diagnose and rickets in children with genu lipoma so flow chart approach to obesity we have to assess growth puberty and onset normal growth normal uh, puberty and uh, then it will be normal exogenous we have to screen for complications second thing there is if there is low growth we have to do for 
go for endocrine workup that is free T4, TSH and cortisol level and parathyroid hormone levels. And if it early onset and developmental uh, delay is there, there is dysmorphism, then we have to go for, if they are present, then we have to go for karyotyping. And if it is absent, then we have to uh, go for targeted panel for obesity. So these are the level of concern. Blood sugar, fasting blood sugar, if it is more than 126 milligram per deciliter, it is suggestive of associated type, uh, type 2 diabetes mellitus, which, which is again a lifestyle disorder. Blood sugar, two hours after glucose, it should not be more than 200. Hemoglobin, HbA1c, if it is uh, more than 6.5%, it is uh, a point to be a point of a concern. Total cholesterol, it should not be more than 200. Low density lipoprotein, uh, it should not be more than 130. Triglycerides, it should not be more than 130. HDL, it should not be less than 40. And ALT, it should not be more than 60. So uh, these are the points. Uh, these are uh, for the screening for complications. So how we diagnose obesity, we have to calculate BMI, uh, height in kg divided by, uh, weight in kg divided by height in uh, meter square. So BMI up to 23, it is normal. 23 to 27, it is overweight as already described and more than 27 is obesity. And waist circumference, it should not be more than 102 centimeter in adult males. It should not be more than 88 centimeter in adult females. And more, it should not be more than 71 centimeter in prepubertal children. So these are the criteria. And what are the preventive measures? We should have, we should plan regular meal timings and including breakfast. Usually children uh, skip breakfast and if they are gaining weight, parents say kidney and they don't give them breakfast or skip some meals. So one should not skip its, uh, his or her breakfast and at least seven to eight hours of sleep daily at night should, should be done. It should be completed. Then changing family eating habits and activity levels rather than focusing on child's weight. What we you usually do, bacha nahi khara, bache ko nahi dena hai, lekin other members are eating other food, that is chuda, chakli and all those things. And but child is not given, you are on dieting, you are on special diet, you are gaining weight. So this should not be done. We should change the family diet habits, family eating habits. Then avoid using food as a reward or withholding food as a punishment since childhood. What, uh, what we do, we give chocolate. You have done good thing, we, we will give chocolate. You have done good thing, we will go for part, a party. So we should avoid these things. And obesity prevention guidelines from American Academy of Pediatrics, a five to one zero rule. Five cups of either fruits or vegetables we have to reduce screen time to two hours, not more than that. Maximum two hours of screen time, one hour of outdoor activity or play, and zero uh, sugary food, uh, sugary drinks should be avoided. Sugary uh, drinks should be replaced by water, plain water. So our target should be Gradual and sustained weight loss, body, uh, body mass index, SD score reduction, and there should be 7 to 10% of weight loss over 6 months, not more than that. What we do, uh, what our children do, that should not be done. Avoid loss over 1.5 kg per month. The goal should be realistic. Focus on modest reduction of intake, changes in eating habits, and the incorporation of 
healthy exercise oriented lifestyle so treatment it depends on child's age it is tailor made approach for each and every child and depending upon uh, upon their age family background and education level of parents and other things then overall health of the child if child is suffering from uh, excessive uh, obesity more than 35% of the uh, bmi is there more than bmi more than 35% and we say him jao Uh, jump karo, jog karo. It is not possible. It should uh, be a uh, slow and steady. Medical history of the child, comorbid conditions uh, should be ruled out, and they should be treated. Then extent of condition, then adolescent tolerance for specific medication should be done. Procedures and therapies, and individual opinion and preference are very important. If family is vegetarian, we cannot say them. से देम की आप जाके अंडा खाओ या नॉन वेज वाला डाइट लो सो इंडिविजुअल ओपिनियन एंड प्रेफरेंसेस आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट व्हाट आर द जनरल मेजर्स रेगुलर मील्स इंक्लूडिंग ब्रेकफास्ट 45 मिनट्स वन आवर ऑफ एक्टिविटी अवॉइड रिगरस डाइटिंग अवॉइड स्नैकिंग इन एक्टिविटी स्क्रीन एक्सपोजर वाइल ईटिंग व्हाट वी डू वी सिट इन अ हॉल एंड वी ईट देयर so we have to avoid that then identify red flag signs socio uh, psychosocial problems of the child that is absenteeism from school body shaming teasing by peers regarding weight and appearance we have to find out all these factors and we have to treat them simultaneously we have to take care, uh, care of their emotional status psychological status also and specially referral in the presence of complications medical mani- uh, management consists of metformin it is approved in type 2 diabetes and in some cases of pcos also it is given and uh, it may consider in cases related to antipsychotic medication pcos and streptohepatitis and orlistat it is gastric lipase inhibitor it is approved over 12 years of age bariatric surgery should be discouraged as it carries more significant complication than adults and indicated only in severe obesity that is bmi more than 40 uh, kg per meter square or 35 kg per meter square with complications like diabetes or any other illnesses associated with obesity and only after completion of linear growth a multidisciplinary obesity team uh, approach is uh, important that is dietitian then psychologist then pediatrician if any complication is there then that should be taken off or uh, taken care of and extreme mit- uh, motivation strict diet activity schedule must be maintained after surgery otherwise there will be no use of bariatric surgery so obesity comes with metabolic syndrome metabolic syndrome lead to obesity obesity leads to metabolic syndrome and it's a there will be hyperlipidemia insulin resistance cardiovascular uh, diseases type 2 diabetes obesity may lead to thyroid dysfunction and thyroid dysfunction may lead to obesity and insulin resistance and pcos these all conditions are interrelated so we have to screen for them and we have to take care of each and every condition simultaneously so dyslipidemia we already have seen values uh, cut off points and universal screening of non fasting non hdl cholesterol in children 9 to 11 years prior to onset of puberty is important and again in individual between 17 to 21 years and targeted screening should occur in children 2 to 8 year old and adolescent 12 to 16 year old with uh, two fasting lipid profiles between 2 weeks and 3 months apart so and results are average evaluation anthropo- uh, anthropometric measurement including bmi waist circumference vital blood pressure me- uh, measurement blood glucose that is fasting or oral, oral 
glucose tolerance test, then lipid profile, and follow up should be done. Uh, seen six weeks after starting medication, and thereafter every three months. So there will be regular. There should be regular follow up, and during follow up we have to do fasting lipid profile, height weight measurement. We have to plot them on chart, and we have to compare them. Then safety lab include. Uh, LFTs and CPK, if we are using any medications and tests, should be done. And once target has been achieved, follow up should be every after six months, if possible. Then uh, dyslipidemia. So, laboratory test for PCOS, beta HCG, thyroid test, TFT, then luteinizing hormone and FSH, prolactin, and free total uh, testosterone. So there will be a decreased uh, SA, uh, sex hormone binding uh, globulin levels, elevated LH level, ele elevated LH and FSH ratio will be there, uh, increased fasting insulin levels, and it is important to note that total testosterone levels may be only marginally in elevated or even normal in women with PCOS. So these are the findings which we get uh, during laboratory investigations in PCOS and uh, treatment options are cyclic progestins, uh, GNRH agonist, weight control, low carb diet, exercise to reduce weight and cardiovascular risk factors and OCPs, uh, then suppress LH and decrease androgens, spironolactone is one of the choice for uh, PCOS. Associated diabetes mellitus, we have to rule out and we have to see for fast, uh, fasting glucose, which is more fasting insulin, which is dropped and fasting lipid profile is uh, higher side. It is on higher side. So prevention of type, uh, type 2 diabetes, obesity is the main modifiable risk factor for type 2 diabetes and small amounts of weight loss, 5 to 10% uh, should be done. And even 5% weight, uh, weight reduction in those who are overweight or obese improves the risk of complications such as heart disease. Metformin, it is the uh, medicine uh, given to reduce hyperinsulinemia, decreases risk factor for uh, CHD, then improve weight loss, normalize circulating androgen, and resumption of normal ovulatory menses and reversal of infertility, and also the diabetes sugar management is done. So, along with drug therapy, standard and global algorithm exists use of medication, lifestyle modification and changes in nutrition dietary habits are also very important to uh, combat with lifestyle disorders. As a pediatrician, we can educate parents and children to modify their lifestyle and eating habits. We can give them target weight uh, and screen them, advise them accordingly. We have to diagnose early, intervene early, and we will get better results of these lifestyle disorders. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am, for an excellent deliberation. You have covered all the NCDs type of which the obesity is now coming as an epidemic. And we know that by 2030, the world's 48% uh, percent population of adults will be obese. That is what WHO has predicted. And our Indian society, Adhiyapan Manatoto ki sagejana kiti rode thak nahi hai nahi aane aata ulta jale even in rural areas. We are finding obesity because uh, with the uh, 5 rupees, 10 rupees, you are getting the drinks and whatever uh, the kurkures and etc., which is uh, having the effect on our children. And as you have said, that it is the family and the child together that should be as one team. And they should not only tell the child to adolescent to do the thing. But the child, uh, father and mother should be the role models. If they, they are, or are obese and not doing any exercise, 
uh, you can't tell the children to do the exercise and we eat everything in front of them so that is the pathetic situation and now most of the things are written in our chat box that at the tip of your uh, mobile you have the swiggy tiggy piggy everything is there and one of them has written that if it is you do swiggy you will become piggy <laughs> so i like it to, we have to replace uh, zomato by tomato yeah that is what zomato by <laughs> tomato is there zomato by tomato uh, yeah and uh, that parents should be the role model if you are not doing it uh, and asking only the children that the children won't follow you right from the 5 to 6 years of age so dr tambuli sir please uh, i request you to have your opinion on mam stock it was excellent talk uh, talk regarding uh, all uh, obesity management and uh, uh, only thing is that i just want to uh, add that uh, nutrition has very important role and uh, we have seen that uh, uh, in this uh, covid area uh, uh, the period uh, many children has become obese because they were at home and uh, uh, eating was uh, not only done uh, as a uh, uh, recreation uh, and they were uh, having uh, every now and then uh, all uh, other uh, food also so most important is that uh, if you want to uh, re reduce the weight 25% rule should be uh, considered that uh, if that child want to eat one roti or chapati then he should have one vati of salad one vati of either uh, any protein like varan uh, 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 or uh, it can be uh, 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 usar and then one vati of the uh, sabji so that if that three what is it he is finishing with that one roti then if he has uh, want if he want to eat one more uh, roti he can eat that but with this all three so that is very important if the, this 25% rule is obeyed uh, uh, then i think uh, the um, uh, weight loss uh, definitely happens with the children with the exercise and exercise is very very important and, and many times what happens that after 10 years uh, for the uh, actually girl child obesity uh, goes on increasing and they said that no exercise for the girls so that should not happen that uh, exercise should be there for both girls as well as boys and it should be around 45 minutes uh, which which madam has said, uh, told very nicely that about Five, uh, four, and uh, three, two, one. Also, that was very uh, important, and I think uh, it was. Uh, that's all. I just want to add. Thank you very much. Ah, I just want to add. Good afternoon, one, one. Ah, yeah. Ah, uh, these two cases. Again, the purpose is that the pediatricians are a little multitasking. Yeah, the two are just doing their job. Because we are teamwork. But many times, team is not available. आणि प्रत्येक वेळेस आपण रेफर करत गेलो तर पेशंट तर येणारच नाही वापस सो आय थिंक द मेजर टेक होम मेसेज याच्यात हा आहे की थोडं थोडं जर आपण स्वतःला या म्हणजे ओबेसिटी मॅनेजमेंट असो किंवा मेंटल हेल्थ इश्यूज असो थोडस एम्पॉवर केलं आपण स्वतःला तर कदाचित आपण अजून जास्त चांगल्या रीतीने एकाच ठिकाणी या सगळ्या सर्व्हिसेस देऊ शकतो आणि त्याच्यात सर्वात महत्वाची गोष्ट ग्रोथ चार्ट वापरणं दोन हजार पंधरा साली चार्ट आले पण अजूनही खूप पिडियाट्रिशियन्स वापरत नाही पिडियाट्रिशियन्सनी ग्रोथ चार्ट वापरायला सुरुवात करणं फार महत्वाचं आहे आणि ते खूप सोपं आहे इव्हन त्यांचा स्टाफ वापरू शकतो आणि त्यांना डायग्नोसिस सांगू शकतो इतकं ते सोपे चार्ट आहेत आणि इतके चांगले चार्ट आहेत आणि त्याचे एकदम चांगले रिझल्ट आहेत म्हणजे आपल्याला पेशंटना कन्व्हिन्स करायला पण त्याचे खूप चांगले उपयोग होतात त्यामुळे मला असं वाटतं की ते फार महत्वाचं आहे की ग्रोथ चार्ट वापरायला सुरुवात करायला पाहिजे सगळ्यांना हॅलो गुड आफ्टरनून दिस इज हॅलो गुड आफ्टरनून दिस इज डॉक्टर वीणा गायकवाड फ्रॉम औरंगाबाद a uh, very nice session on adolescent health psychosocial and uh, even the dietary lifestyle modification uh, i congratulate dr jayshree shivalkar and dr giri on uh, for their topics and their studies and the presentation ways they had uh, i have one query to both of you one is lifestyle diseases management expert and the other one is the psychologist or pediatric psychologist so in particular i wanted to ask during pandemic the adolescent group and children who understand five years and above they all suffered they had tremendous psychological stress also and the lifestyle was also terribly changed altered 
so all sociologists psychologists and pediatricians in india at the national level were concerned about the outcome of the pandemic particularly in adolescent health and studies were on during the pandemic did in did we in maharashtra have any prospective study to keep a watch on mental effects of the pandemic as well as the lifestyle diseases whether it is increasing and what are the adverse effects um of the pandemic one and a half years to two years the children suffered like anything so do we have such a plan or any prospective study being taken up by the adolescent health association in particular and uh, are we going to concentrate upon the school schools in particular to tackle these problems this is all right for pediatricians every pediatrician at his or her level is managing what your problem is coming their way during pandemic also we managed excellently uh do we are not psychologists or but they had full faith parents had full faith in the treating pediatrician so do we have some study during the pandemic or post pandemic are we are we doing some prospective studies and what are we doing uh under a plan to tackle the psychological as well as the lifestyle disorders uh having uh, increased during this particular covid pandemic thank you see in my experience uh, i am not aware of any research being taken but my experience was that uh, the adolescents uh, definitely had stress because of many things during pandemic because they realized the uh, bad effects of all this pandemic but children were enjoying quite a few children had a good time with their parents no school no early morning uh, course to be done in hurry uh, so uh, up to 10 12 years they did not realize what they are missing out in the school or the impact of pandemic as general so younger children had a good time fairly good time but the older definitely who are into their academics uh, 8 9 10 11 definitely had a suffer but i am not aware of any studies being done yeah good evening can i come in i request i uh, yes yes i request dr sri shailam kotar garu from uh, right. nizamabad telangana he is a central iip member this year please sir yeah namaste to all very excellently presented dr manjusha and dr jeshri ma'am uh, and you. one more thing is that uh, as pediatrician and stakeholders uh, we should put pressure on the government to, to stop advertising during the cartoon uh, time and one more thing is that we should ensure that at the time of the opening of the schools that's for example the school opens at 8 o'clock from at least 7 to 8 o'clock uh, up to 1 kilometer the vehicles should not be allowed the school bus the, the mothers and parents bringing the child on the auto rickshaws on the vehicles they should stop at least 1 kilometer away so that the child at least walks for a, a half a kilometer or whatever so it any you know it doesn't should not look like a punishment because nowadays we are not having so many parks or places where they can children can go out for walking and more of academic stress i think certain small small thing changes can really help and more of use of the utility cycling like for buying some kirana shop they should use the parents should start using the utility cycling so and uh, the whatever prescription we give because prescribing medicine is very easy but prescription of uh, changes on lifestyle and physical activity i tell you it's very tough because it, the to get the ideal physical activity it is so tough even if you just want to look for the simple cycling if you want to calculate how much i have to do a cycling to spend 100 calories or 200 calories there's a lot of calculation so i think we should encourage them to use certain apps like strava garmin so that it is very easy they can just put their weight height and age so how much amount of cycling they can be done and one more small uh, this like any child should not be advised gym because in one of the uh, uh, case presentation it was there that uh, she used to go for gym should discourage below children uh, in children below 19 years i think we should discourage uh, encouraging them to going to gym we should discourage them because the epiphyseal fusion is still not there there's lot of problems so bone problems are more so i agree uh, i agree yeah good suggestions even yes, over the counter medicine should be avoided should not be taken which is going to happen uh, which is happening and even protein powders and food habits food fats 
keto diet intermittent dieting intermittent fasting, fasting. Mm-hmm. should be avoided <laughs> and actually uh, madam there are certain uh, uh, that is bms bhms doctors who yes. say themselves to have uh, some formula like taking some oil on one yes. day and yes, doing yes. something it is causing so much hampering and also uh, nutritional deficiencies in nutritional, the adolescence uh, yeah. but again it is the role of pediatrician to come forward and create awareness so, uh, madam we do tell but uh, sometimes they they go on their own because they want a crash this madam ji sangitle ki crashing crash course paije diet madhe ki lage is eka mahinyat 5 kilo kami karayla paije but they don't know, know that know. they are going to revert back to the same phase if they stop doing this everything has to be fast in this adolescence autism certificate treatment karta hai yeah and one more suggestion was one of them excellently commented we should start from our side and i think in pedicons and on all the conference and cme programs i said we should ensure that uh, itna sara khana parosna waste karna we should discourage i think in one of the nutrition workshop which i conducted in nizamabad dr upendra sir had come so he said yaar tum log nutrition ka cme laga rahe ho aur itna sara khana non veg ye junk so i think we should then from that day i remember we stick to that diet menu in our cme programs only one or two items used to be there and uh, when i was a kid there used to be a janata meal in menu there used to be a janata <laughs> meal but those things are not seen nowadays it's a full plate full meal full meal full meal so i think uh, we should encourage Sir, there are seven seven course seven courses are there in the dinner and lunch every time <laughs> right, right. and i thank amol also amol for giving this opportunity he uh, shared the link with me and thank you all you're welcome sir yeah thank uh, you sir for giving us this opportunity yeah any more questions uh, to be asked tambodi sir aplyala kai sangaycha nahi thank you thank you okay okay so now i uh, request dr amol power our secretary of maharashtra ap to conduct the vote of thanks i thank chief guest today's chief guest dr suchit tambodi sir Uh, who is a developmental pediatrician and a icon and he is the first pediatrician to get phd degree from mhs it is uh, he has done wonderful work till now in developmental pediatrics and the next dr jayashree shivalkar ma'am and dr manjusha giri ma'am for their very elaborative dis- uh, this thing description and uh, <coughs> excellent inputs to all pediatricians over, over maharashtra then i thank dr sri shailam kotar garu who is the ep member from telangana uh, this year uh, for joining this today's session i thank dr renu boralkar ma'am dr sonali shirbate ma'am uh, for conducting this session and i thank dr all the attendees all the pediatrician who have attended this program on zoom and <coughs> uh, this youtube platform also i thank all all <coughs> one and all for this uh, uh, joining <coughs> this uh, session and then uh, all we will be con- continuing with these sessions throughout the year if any suggestions are there from your side you can contact dr renu goralkar ma'am and sonali shirbate ma'am dr gangolia sir and myself thank you one and all thank you thank you so much everyone thank have you so much thank you so much everyone have a good so much have a good weekend <laughs>